students uh, welcome to the today's session today we will be discussing uh, one force which uh, which is we are studying in almost in every topic that is name is gravitational force we will show the one of its property that gravitational force is a conservative force so let us start with the today's topic the gravitational force the question we may be asked in the fashion is that uh, show that the gravitational force is an conservative force is a is an example of is an example of conservative force conservative force so so we will know that when there are two bodies whose mass suppose uh, this is the first body whose mass is m1 this is the second body whose mass is m2 and if these two bodies are separated by the distance r then the gravitational force between these two objects it is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of these two masses and uh, it is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them okay and uh, if you remove this proportionality sign you can write a constant whose name is Newton's gravitational constant. So you will have the gravitational force which is expressed as F is equal to G M1 M2 upon R square. Okay. So in our today's lecture, we will be showing that the force due to the gravitational interaction it is an example of conservative force. Uh, let me let me recap yesterday in uh, our uh, earlier section what we have discussed about the conservative force. In conservative force, we have discussed that uh, force field is called, called as conservative force field. If the work done during the round trip by that force field it is equal to zero, then such a kind of force field is called as the conservative force field. So now we will consider the work done by the gravitational force for an object moving from a point A to point B, and we will show that that work done is coming out to be zero. So this is the uh, aim of our today's lecture. If you if you can show that this work done is equal to zero, then we can say that this gravitational force is nothing but a conservative force. Okay. So let us start with this uh, derivation. Okay. So consider a uh, reference system. For example, uh, let us say this is an x-axis and y-axis. This is x-axis and y-axis for a given system so this is my y-axis this is my x-axis so let us say this is origin and on origin there is a body is kept whose mass is capital M okay so there is a body whose mass is capital M it is kept at the origin okay and there is another body which is moving from this point A to point B so let us say we are going from point A to point B okay like this okay so let us join uh, these points to the origin like this okay so let us join these two points to the origin let us call these position vectors of this point A and B as R A and R B so this is my R A and this is R B okay for example when we are moving from point A to point B so let us call this as my path 1 this is my path 1 along which we are moving okay let us say this is path 1 okay and during this for example the object is moving like this and suppose it is coming at this point let us say uh, we are doing this calculation when the object is at point P okay so uh, I join this point to this so let us call this as so this vector the position vector of this point let us call this as an r okay and we know that the gravity so this is an object whose mass is m okay this object is moving from point a to point b the mass of this object is small m the mass of this object is small m okay now what we need to calculate is the work done when we are going from A to B, so along the path one, we will again consider the work done by the another path. For example, we are going through this path number 2. 
okay so this is the second path along which we are moving okay so we will be going from a to b along the path 1 and we are going from b to a along the path 2 okay so now what we will do we will consider this and we will consider the work done around the tree okay so let us start uh, by considering this and for this we know that if there are two objects separated by a certain distance r then the gravitational force between these two objects it is uh, directed towards the each other means the force due to this it is attractive because gravitational force is always attractive okay and it is a kind of central force okay so it is uh, these two objects are attracting each other so the force it is in this direction okay the gravitational force between these two objects it is directed towards this so this is the force exerted by this object on this object now we are moving this object in under the influence of gravitational force exerted by this object whose mass is capital N. Okay, so first of all, we will write down the de description of the figure, then we will start. Okay, so write down uh, consider an object of mass of mass capital M placed at placed at origin O origin O ok so we are saying that the object whose mass is capital M is kept at the origin O and another body we were we are moving another body from point A to point B whose mass is small m let another body let another body another body of mass of mass small m is moving is moving under the influence of uh, is moving from a to b from a to b from a to b along path 1 along path 1 along path 1 ok uh, now uh, the position vectors of the position vectors the position vectors of point A and B of point A and B are R A and R B R A and R B respectively the gravitational force the gravitational force gravitational force f bar acts on the object acts on the object of mass m of mass m the work done the work done the work done during during the displacement during the displacement ds bar is given by is given by dw is equal to f bar dot ds bar f bar dot ds bar and if the displacement and force are making an angle theta then this f bar dot ds bar can be written as f ds cos theta where theta is the angle between the displacement and the force the force is acting in the direction towards the object of mass capital M the displacement is in this direction ok so now what we will do ds cos theta it represents the projection along the um, force direction so ds cos theta it is nothing but dr ds cos theta is equal to dr therefore we can rewrite dw is equal to f dr ok now this situation we have considered for an infinitesimal 
displacement d s bar at a point p. Now, but we have to calculate the total work done when object moves from point A to point B. Okay, so the work done, the work done, the work done, moving, work done in moving an object m small m from A to B from A to B. Is W from A to B. So we are calculating total work done when object is moving from point A to point B. It is integral from A to B dW. Integral A to B dW. So when we are moving from point A to point B, position vector of point A it is R A and position vector of the point B it is R B. So actually we are changing the radial uh, position vectors from R A to R B and D W it is nothing but F D R F D R. But we have seen earlier the gravitational force between the two objects whose masses are M and capital M it is given by G capital M small M upon R square into D R and R is running from A to B that is R A to R B. Now our integral is with respect to R. Uh, the other terms which are not containing R they will be constant and we can take it outside. So it is G M M upon integral one upon R square into D R. R is running from R A to R B. Okay. Now integral of one upon R square. We had seen earlier that this formula. This formula we had seen. Uh, integral x raised to n dx. It is nothing but x raised to n plus one upon n plus one. So in this case, if I write one upon r square, it will be r raised to minus two dr. R, because when the power goes to the numerator, it will become negative. So it is r raised to minus two dr. So it is r raised to minus two plus one upon minus two plus one. Minus two plus one it becomes r raised to minus one upon minus one. This we can rewrite as minus one over r. So integral of one over r square dr it is nothing but minus one upon r. So we will write it over here. G m m in bracket minus one upon r in bracket r is running from r a to r b. So first of all we will put the upper limit which is nothing but g m m. Upon, sorry, G M M upper limit it will be one upon R B minus one upon R A. Okay, so this is the work done when your object is moving from point A to point B. Okay, this is the work work done when object is moving from point A to B. On the similar line, because we have to find out the work done round the tree. So we have reached from point A to point. B. So we are at the point B now. Now what we will do? We will move from point A to point B to point A again. So therefore, work done from B to A. Work done from B to A. We can write it from this expression only. See, when W work done, it is from point A to B. We are getting R B minus R A. So when the work done is from B to A, we can directly write this expression. G M M in bracket, so it is final minus initial point. Final point minus initial point. So in this case, the final point is one upon R A minus one upon R B. Even you can calculate this as well by the same method. Also, you can calculate. Just the thing is that your variable of integration it will move from R B to R A. So your lower limit it will be R B and upper limit will be R A. Okay, so this is the work done. Now, what I'll do, I'll call this as an equation one. I'll call this as an equation two. So, therefore, work done round the tree. Work done round the tree. Round the tree. W is. So we can write down the work done round the tree, which is nothing but the when we are moving from A to B and B to. A. So it is addition of W from A to B 
and B to A. So this is the addition of these two work done. Okay. So work done from A to B we have already calculated which is G M M up is into one upon R B minus one upon R. And W work done from B to A we have calculated G M M one upon R A minus one upon R B. So what we will do? We will take G M M outside. We will take G M M outside. This quantity I have taken outside. So in the first term I will get one upon R B. One upon R B minus one upon R A plus plus one upon R A plus one upon R A minus one upon R B minus one upon R B. Now see this one upon R B minus one upon R B and this minus one upon R A and this plus one upon R A will going to cancel. So uh, what I'll get? The work done during a round trip it is coming out to be zero. So work done during the round trip it is coming out to be zero. So now you can recall the our uh, previous lectures definition that whenever the work done during the round trip it is coming out to be zero, then the corresponding force field is called as the conservative force field. So here we can say that. As the work done during the round trip, it is coming out to be zero. So gravitational force is an example of a conservative force. Okay. I hope you people have understood this. Okay. Uh, we will come with the example of non-conservative force in the next lecture. Thank you.